On this example, our goal is to find the area in between two curves with only x values greater than or equal to zero. Um, so as we need, uh, we're gonna try to find the limits of integration and we're gonna round those and our answer both to two decimal places. So we do have a graph on this one, which is kind of nice. Um, we have our constant function y equals one going across here. And then we have this uh, parabola, the x minus one quantity squared minus two is gonna be this lower function here. All right, so one of our bounds of integration is gonna be at zero. This left-hand side is an X value of zero and that's basically given to us. To calculate the other bound of integration, what we wanna do is we're looking for where these meet over here on the right-hand side, where they're gonna meet when they're equal. So we can set them equal to one another. So one equals X minus one quantity squared minus two. And we just need to solve this down. So I'm gonna add the two, move it to the other side then apply a square root to both sides to get rid of the square. So we have square root of three equals X minus one. And I didn't keep the plus and minus in this case because I know I'm looking for a positive value between two and three. All right, and then to finish this up, I'm gonna add one, move it to the other side. So we have square root of three with a plus one outside of the radical is equal to X. All right, now Let's go ahead and get that approximation. We can put it into our calculator and we're gonna get 2.73, which is about where we would visualize this to be between two and three. So we can feel pretty confident about that. So our lower bound was zero and our upper bound was 2.73. All right, next what we wanna do is we wanna set up what goes on the inside here. Well, it's gonna be our upper function one minus our lower function the parabola down here at the bottom. So we're gonna subtract away X minus one quantity squared minus two. And uh, with a DX at the end, because these are X values. All right, now what we have going on on the inside here is pretty complicated looking. So let's just go off to the side and see if we can simplify that a little bit. So I'm gonna take that one minus x minus one times another copy of x minus one minus two. I've rewritten this so I have two copies of that same base multiplied together. And we're gonna expand this out and do a little bit of simplifying before we actually integrate. So we have one minus and then FOIL our distributive property. We'll get x squared minus two x plus one minus two. All right, I went ahead and did this kind of quickly, but take your time if you're not comfortable doing it in your head like this. Okay, um, next I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, that's one minus x squared minus two x minus one, as we combine together the one minus two. Distribute our negative, so we have one minus x squared plus two x plus one. Our constants can now combine together. We get two minus x squared plus two x. And that's equivalent to everything that's on the inside here. So we can say, okay, that's really the integral from zero to 2.73. And then on the inside, we can put two minus x squared plus two x. And we need to integrate that. All right, so let's do the integrating. As we do this, it's just gonna be the power rule and also the constant rule, I guess you could say. So we'll get two X is the antiderivative of two minus, we'll increase the exponent by one and go one divided by that new exponent out in front, plus bring along the constant, we'll increase the exponent by one, divide by the new exponent out in front. And then we still need to evaluate that between zero and 2.73. Okay, to finish this up, uh, now that we've done our antiderivative, we just need to plug in the top value, two times 2.73 minus one third times 2.73 to the third power. The two over two makes one, so I'm just gonna go 2.73 squared minus, now we need to plug in the bottom value, uh, the zero, so we have two times zero minus one third zero cubed plus zero squared. Well, all the rest at the end here, everything in that last set of parentheses is all has multiples of zero. So all of that becomes zero. And then we'll put the first part here into our calculators to get an approximation. I got it to be about 6.13. All right, so that's gonna be the area in between these two curves. Um, hopefully this tutorial helps out on 
kind of challenging problems. Um, but take your time, work it step by step. It's easy to make little mistakes along the way, um, but you can get this. Good luck.